Hi everyone and welcome to another video by BioTeach, this time focusing on Required Practical 2 which looks at how to prepare a root tip squash to observe cells in mitosis and also gives you some practice at setting up and using a low powered microscope. This experiment comes up in the A-level biology cells module and of course in the BTEC applied science as well as part of unit 11 genetics and genetic engineering so it is useful for both specifications. In this experiment, you will use either onion root or garlic root to look at living cells which are undergoing mitosis. We look at the meristem region or the very tip of the roots as this is where most of the growth occurs and will likely have the mitotically dividing cells. We use onion or garlic as each of the cells only have eight chromosomes, so it's really easy to see the chromosomes once they've condensed. In order to observe the cells in division, we need to create microscope slides with a single layer of cells, so we'll talk through how to do this in a second. Your teacher or technician will have allowed some roots to grow in standing the garlic or onion in water, a bit like you can see in that image on the right. Usually leaving them suspended in water for about three days allows the roots to grow long enough to be able to experiment on. Last year I did have a problem in growing these roots though because most of the fruits and vegetables in the supermarkets have been ionised so it takes a while for the roots to actually grow but you can do it with good success with some patience. The first thing you need to do is cut a few roots off at around 2 centimetres and in the beaker add hydrochloric acid to which you will add your root tips. Those black lines in the beaker represent three root tips that I would add. The purpose of the hydrochloric acid is to destroy the substances that unite the cells. It's usually a protein known as pectin, but this does not actually destroy the cell walls. The hydrochloric acid also has the ability to kill the cells and halt the process of mitosis so we can increase our chances of seeing the cells mid-division. The root tips will be left in acid for about 15 minutes. I usually ask my students to pick two or three tips to put in the acid in case the first slide doesn't quite work out properly and they might want to try again. In the meantime, you can set up a light microscope and familiarise yourself with the various parts of it which your teacher or technician can talk you through. When the 15 minutes is up, you will need to rinse one of the root tips in distilled water in the watch glass. And when it's rinsed, you need to identify which part is the tip part and which bit is the location where you cut from the plant. The tip usually looks a bit pointy and the bit where you've cut should hopefully be quite straight so you will need to snip off around one millimetre sample from the tip end and place it on the microscope a bit like this diagram here. The stain that we use to dye the cells is known as toluidine blue but some method sheets suggest using something called acetic orsin which is supposedly more successful for staining results. If using toluidine blue, I've found it usually takes about 10 minutes for the stain to really dye the contents of the cell and for the parts of the cell to become stained a blue colour properly. I usually ask my students to macerate or mash the root tip with a needle for about 10 minutes to give them a good chance of being able to observe the cells with a darker stain. Once they've macerated the tip, we gently place the glass cover slip on top and then using your thumb, you should press down firmly onto the cover slip to squish the cells under the cover slip. Do not move your thumbs or fingers side to side, or you will have cells which will roll over or overlap one another, and that won't be any good to view under the microscope. By pressing down firmly at a 90 degree angle with your thumb, you can ensure that you're creating a single layer of cells to observe. Finally, you're ready to observe your slide under the microscope. When you get to this stage, you might find that you can't actually see any of the cells underneath the cover slip with the naked eye. But don't panic, because when you put it under the microscope, it might look a little bit like this. This image was taken about a year ago by a student who carried out this method successfully. And you can see a number of cells in mitotic division. I've highlighted some particularly attractive looking cells on the slide in pink circles. So we can see some in metaphase, some in anaphase, there's one particular one that's just undergoing telophase or cytokinesis. The task here would be to observe the entire slide and identify the cells in mitotic division, and then to hand draw some of the cells in each phase. Your teacher might think 
to ask you to use a graticule to measure the cell size and to calculate something known as the mitotic index. So there is a little bit of math that's involved in this particular practical. This image over here shows you something that looks a little bit lighter in colour. We can still observe a couple of cells in mitotic division. However, the staining is not of the highest of quality. It's pretty light, so it might make it a little bit difficult for you to observe the slide under the microscope. There could be a number of reasons why this has happened. It could be that the stain was not left on for long enough. It could be that the root tips were not left in acid long enough or that the stain has expired or diluted. So this is another reason why we prepare a couple of root tips so that we can come back and do the staining on another root tip just in case the first time it doesn't quite work out the way that you want it to. Here are a few more examples of what you should be able to observe providing your slide preparation and root tip preparation was carried out with a high degree of competence. These images have been taken from funsci.com, which have some great examples on the website. You can see the image on the left hand side here shows prophase and the one on the right shows metaphase. There's another couple of pictures here. The one on the left shows you the anaphase and the one on the right shows you towards the end of anaphase and kind of the telophase section. These are also taken from funsci.com. Finally, I would ask my students to practice doing some calculations. Now this table here shows the phases of mitosis and the number of cells at each phase. It also goes on to say on the right hand side that the onion and garlic root cells have a cell cycle time of approximately 24 hours. Now this is application of this practical. This is an example of the type of exam question that you might get in your papers where you're asked about this particular practical. Now, the question would be to calculate the time spent by the cells in each of the phase. And in order to do this, we would do the number of cells divided by the total number of cells multiplied by 100. So, for example, for interphase, you've got 112 cells that were in interphase. So we divide that by 137 because we've worked out the total number of cells. And we multiply that by 100 to say that 82 percent of the cells were in interphase and we carry on doing that where we identify 10% in prophase, 3% in metaphase, 2% in anaphase and 3% in telophase. The next part is to estimate the time spent in each stage in minutes. So in order to do that we would effectively do 82 divided by 100 times by 1440 and the reason we do 1440 is because we convert 24 hours into minutes. And when we do that particular calculation, you would get 1,181 minutes for interphase, 144 for prophase, 432 for metaphase, 288 for anaphase, and 432 for telophase. So you might want to pause the video and kind of do some of these calculations to check them, make sure that you understand what's going on. I will also post some questions on my test shop um, that will allow you to practice this particular calculation in a bit more detail. The next thing that your teacher might ask you to do is calculate the mitotic index. Mitotic index is defined as the percentage of cells undergoing mitosis in a given population of cells, and it gives us the measure of the capacity of the cells to divide and effectively the rate of cell division. When we're calculating mitotic index, we need to exclude the cells that are in interphase. We only count the cells which possess visibly condensed chromosomes. And the calculation or the formula for mitotic index is to do the number of cells in the stages of mitosis divided by the total number of cells. So let's say I wanted to calculate the mitotic index of this field of view that you can see on this photograph. I would simply count up all of the cells I can see. Let's say, for example, that's 160. I would then count up the cells that were in prophase, anaphase, metaphase and telophase. For example, let's say that's 70. The mitotic index would be calculated by doing 70 over 160 and then getting an answer of around 0.42 to two decimal places. The higher the mitotic index, the more the cells are dividing. A high mitotic index can indicate that there is extensive growth and replacement of cells or that the cells are dividing uncontrollably, like we would see in cancer. We would expect the mitotic index to be fairly high in the root tip and for it to decrease as we go higher up the root towards the stem. We know this because as we get further away from the root, the cell division is reduced and therefore the mitotic index is lower. 
We should also note that as you get higher up towards the stem part, you get cell specialization occurring, and those aren't the cells that are actively dividing. Finally, I would ask my students to practice some cell drawings. I usually give the following guidance when completing drawings to ensure that you're creating beautiful and biologically appropriate drawings of your own. The key points here are the ones that are in bold, which specifically apply to this particular practical, but I do also think the other points are really important to note. The main thing I would be looking for when I'm marking biological drawings is to see that they're drawn in pencil with clear lines and no shading. I don't want to see any sort of colouring in. If you want to kind of shade an area or to show that one part of the cell is darker, we would use stippling instead. And I've got an example for you in a second. I would also expect to see if they've used an IP squatticule, I would expect that there should be some information about the cell size, a scale bar, or some information about the magnification that they've used. So here's an example of a hand-drawn uh, cell on the right-hand side compared to the micrograph image. This image is provided by Funsai, so I do wish to give them credit for this micrograph that you see on the left hand side. And this is a hand drawn diagram that I've just completed for you to kind of see the kind of effects that you'd be looking for, what your teacher would be looking for when they're marking your lab books. So you can see that the lines are very clear. I haven't used any sort of shading, but I have used a stippling effect to highlight where the points are darker. I've not coloured in the chromosomes as such, but I've kind of just drawn the outline and tried to make it as true to scale as I can. I've provided a scale bar to show what size um, that distance would be in terms of 40 micrometres wide. And I've also given you the magnification that I've used. So this is the kind of example we'd be looking for. OK, so I hope that was useful for you. If you've got any questions, then please leave me a comment underneath this video. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope that you found it really interesting. Bye for now.